What does Barrett Salee think about Joe Milton the third as compared to Shane Beamer and Spencer Rattler? Well, I'll tell you. And it's brought to you by crafttreats.com. With crafttreats.com, you can use the promo code off the hook again, off the hook, and get 20% off. That includes the chill pills, but all products. But with the chill pills, they've got the CBD derivatives that can help with your pets' digestive issues, arthritis issues, or anxiety issues. So here is what Barrett Slee says says, quote, I don't trust Joe Milton. I trust Spencer Rattler and I trust Shane Beamer. Little background. This is a pretty vast departure. And I will credit Barrett for not getting hung up on an old Tennessee take that he had. And that was he loved Bush Jones and thought that Tennessee was going to win the East and eventually the SEC championship. So he has moved on from that, which is good. Um, But. Based off two games, I have trouble draw, drawing the same conclusion. And I know people, someone here, think that I'm a Joe Milton hater. I have more faith in Joe Milton than I do Shane Beamer or Spencer Rattler as a group, as what they'll do this season. Now, if if in the magic world of portals, you could trade a Spencer Rattler for Joe Milton the third, I think there would be a case to be made for that. But as far as this year and what they accomplish, Joe Milton III and Josh Heupel system, as opposed to South Carolina, what they got going on with Beamer and Rattler, I would take Tennessee in that regard. You, Caleb? Easily. Just because I have tr- – sorry, I have to say this. It's funny. You brought up Barrett Salee being a Butch Jones fan, and I've actually defended people who thought the Butch Jones hire was smart at the time. But it is funny that he's defending Shane Beamer right now when a lot of people think Shane Beamer is the new Butch Jones. (laughs) Um, I actually like that comparison a lot. Yeah. So, yes, I have more faith in Josh Heupel and Joe Milton. And here's why. I think Shane Beamer in trying to figure out his offense is a deer in headlights. Look, I think the reason Spencer Rattler came on last year at the end of last year was Marcus Satterfield finally decided, hey, maybe I should utilize Spencer Rattler this way. And it took them till November to figure that out. And I'm like, what type of offensive coach are you when you can't figure that out until November? And Josh Heifel wouldn't know what to do in January. Now Marcus Satterfield is gone. They got Dowell Logans as offensive coordinator, who I have no faith in whatsoever. I think Tennessee should be Tennessee fans should be celebrating that hire all day long. And so because of that, yeah, I have way more faith in – Josh Heupel and Joe Milton. Now I'm with you. I, I'll be honest. If I if I'm Josh Heupel, which quarterback would I rather have? Probably Spencer Rattler. But okay, well let me let me ask you this because on the message board, uh, Rocky Top Tom said to compare Spencer Rattler and Joe Milton is kind of weird. They couldn't be more different contextually, and that's true. One's the big arm guy. One is a guy who can throw in uh, different arm angles and, and, and more natural runner. So if, if you had to take one, just regardless of the offense, let's say we're redoing the recruiting process, which would you take out of the two? Regardless of offense, it can be in Josh Heupel's offense. It can be in Spencer Rattler's. It can be in Shane Beamer's offense. And then I'm going to tell you what I think of Shane Beamer here in a second. But first, let's, let's get into that. Who would you take? Uh- I'd still take Spencer Rattler. Um, I, I mean, I, I still, I, yeah, I still value accuracy um, overall. Also, I mean, we have a little bit of evidence of this because, I mean, remember Spencer Rattler has played in effectively Josh Heupel's offense because he played for Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma. And he was after 2020 considered a Heisman candidate going into 2021. So, I mean, he has a history of producing at a high level in this offense. We're going to compare the two coaches in a few minutes that quite Josh that that Joe Milton doesn't have yet. Yeah, and here's my issue if I'm South Carolina fan out there and we have a lot of South Carolina fans. If I'm if I'm South Carolina fan out there, I I can make a strong argument for Spencer Rattler over Joe Milton the third. I'm going to abstain for the second for a second. You give me a month into the season, I'll give you my take. I probably lean towards Rattler to be real honest with you at this point. But I had very little faith in Shane Beamer long-term. You brought it up. It's been on the message board. It took him until November to figure out how to use Spencer Rattler. 
that to me is a troublesome issue. Let's face it, in 2021, you know, Tennessee went out there and they weren't perfect offensively, but everybody knew the direction. There was no question. And Josh Heupel had a vision, not just for a month or a week or the next practice, but a year, two years down the road. And I think you saw that happen last year. So the 2021 season, uh, I guess it was in particular the Missouri game, uh, a lot of people have pointed to as kind of the turnaround. I mean, that that was all expected to happen by Josh Heupel. I don't know that Shane Beamer expected to up and beat Clemson and Tennessee and suddenly find their offense at the end of the year. Not even close. I don't I don't think that's the case. I think he I think he got very fortunate, caught Tennessee at the wrong at, at the right time for them. And then I think Clemson was a little overrated. Yeah, I I I'm I agree. I'm with you. And I, Dave, I would ask you this. When is the last time you've covered a team or coach or you could remember where a coach didn't figure out something that works until mid-November? Like that late in the season. 2005. <laughs> well, they never figured it out. I thought, they yeah, I mean, that's right. The Angel Clausen thing was a fiasco, yeah. But there wasn't, I mean, like there was a clear answer with Spencer Rattler, there was no answer with the Angel Clausen thing. I felt because I will say, with look, I know the players wanted Rick Clausen, but once Fulmer stuck with Rick Clausen, the offense did sputter awfully in quite a few games. That remember that six to three Alabama game, the worst played game I've ever watched in the history of football. Well, but if you're talking about indecisiveness, that to me stands out. Most coaches will pick the dude and go. Like, I thought they made a huge mistake. If you want to go way back with Rashad Baker, I thought he was, he came out and just looked like the most, and Philip Fulmer said it, most natural receiver he had ever seen. And then he was a defensive back the next day, but he never went back. He never went back and forth. So you make your decision and you live by it. Um, I, I, you know, Jason Witten's another example. They moved to tight end and he was a tight end. There was no discussing it. You can transfer if you want. But yeah, I, I mean, to me, that is the, 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 the biggest issue is the uncertainty into November. I've never well, seen that happen except for 2005. Okay. My question is if the uncertainty into November and then you find your answer in November because Shane Beamer found his answer. And I think that's even a bigger indictment because like the answer was always there on how to use Spencer Rattler. And he just didn't know it at the time. And I think that's what really throws me off. The only thing I could think of is in Here's basketball. Another one the message, here's another one on the message board that's really good. The UT staff is still trying to figure out how to use Alvin Kamara. Shane Beamer that's, Butch Jones. That's, that's pretty good. I mean, let's be honest. Because, I mean, how hard is it to figure out to use that dude? He can do oh, everything. Yeah, that's a good one. Butch, uh, Butch Jones, that's a Gosh, there's actually a few. Remember um, when Florida had the Hail Mary to beat him in 2017 and he's like in his press conference, well, maybe we should have a dime package on defense. <laughs> he didn't have a dime package. <laughs> well, and another one too that ended up working out for Tennessee, if you want to go back to 1994, they, they weren't sure that Peyton Manning was the guy. I mean, Brandon Stewart gave them some flexibility. I think inside the coaching office, they thought that – Peyton was the guy, but Brandon Stewart was a lot like Heath Shuler. He gave them some flexibility running the football when they could use that because of the injury to Colquitt and what the first drive of the season at UCLA. So, yeah, I mean, I that was a little indecisive, but I still think at the end of the day, they thought Peyton's the guy. Yeah, and it was indecisiveness they didn't feel like they had to prepare for at the time until Jerry Colquitt got hurt. I mean, I give them a break on that because I don't think they planned for Colquitt getting hurt. Right. No, I, I agree, but I'm just trying to come up with – I mean – Basically, this up, one's the most inexcusable. The Shane Beamer one is just next-level inexcusable. Yes. Right up there with the Alvin Kamara. I mean, it's <laughs> that's a pretty good one by the message board. I mean, I'm watching him, and I'm like, am I missing something – does he not know pass pro? Because I wasn't covering Tennessee. I was covering more Mideast recruiting, and I really thought I was missing something. I thought he was either a bad dude or something was going on, and I, I just asked around out of curiosity. I didn't even do anything journalistically with it. <laughs> and they're like, there's nothing wrong with him. We don't know what the heck's going on around this place. And that could be another what the H. 
the well, <laughs> what happened to Alvin Kamara? Dave Hooker show. <laughs> oh, here's a here's a funny one. Here's a good one. Um, Ben Howland, who just got fired at Mississippi State. This was in basketball, but uh, when he got hired by Mississippi State, he had been fired by UCLA. And when he gets hired, he's like, "Yeah, I think I'm going to start pressing more." It kind of worked my last year at UCLA. It's like that's the first time you ever learned to press in basketball as a head coach. Yeah, that's when the AD says, "Why don't you shut the hell up?" <laughs> 